The dispute is finally over, Ariane 5 is back and India's GSLV launches, now on KNews. Hi, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews for week 18, 2017. After some serious strikes all around French Guiana, the workers are back and Ariane 5 is ready to take off. Now I have actually covered that launch more than a month ago, so I just give you a brief refresh. The liftoff is now scheduled for May the 4th, yup, on Star Wars Day, so may the force be with you, Ariane Space. <laughs> on top of the rocket are two satellites separated by the so-called Zilda. Not stacking the satellites on top of each other means each can be built individually without the other in mind, which is a big benefit I believe. The smaller one in the bottom is Koreasat 7, a regular communication satellite and the one on top is SGDC, a half military half civilian satellite bringing satellite internet to Brazil. Next up is India's GSLV or geosynchronous launch vehicle launching the day after on May 5th from the Satish Dhawan space center. Unlike most other rockets, GSLV has a solid core and four liquid fueled strap on boosters. Combined they have a thrust to weight ratio of roughly 1.5 at liftoff, which makes it accelerate quite rapidly. You can actually calculate the thrust to weight ratio quite easily without even knowing any of the rocket stats by observing the launch. GSLV is 50 meters tall and during liftoff it takes 4.5 seconds for the rocket to clear that height. The formula for the distance covered during an accelerated movement is one half the acceleration in question times time squared. Now don't confuse this to the time square. Rearranging the equation you can then calculate the acceleration A, which is in this case approximately 5 meters per second per second. Now the gravity acceleration on earth is 10, which means the rocket has to accelerate with 15 meters per second per second upwards and that is a thrust to weight ratio of 1.5. But back to the rocket. It has two more stages from which the second one burns a hypercolic fuel while the third one is India's very first cryogenic upper stage burning liquid hydrogen and oxygen. This of course combines to water vapor and is therefore non-toxic. The payload behind the fairing is GSAT-9 with a mass of 2.3 tons. As I speak there are no exact launch details published but the ISRO usually does a great job and I'm sure they will release all the necessary details after I'm done with the voiceover. However, the destination is no secret since GSAT-9 will be placed in a geosynchronous slot somewhere above India. This means the rocket will launch east to achieve a geosynchronous transfer orbit and, and while it does that the rocket will get smaller and smaller as the empty stages separate away. As mentioned GSAT-9 weighs 2.3 tons which is close to the maximum of payload such a rocket can get to GTO. Most of it is fuel which in this case at least partly consists of xenon gas. Used by its electric ion drive, it will use to hold its position at 48 degrees east. Besides regular communication, the satellite will also carry a Gagang payload. It stands for GPS Aided Geo Augmented Navigation and is basically an additional point of reference for objects on earth to enhance the GPS accuracy of India. India is huge and has a lot of citizens which also want to get from A to B quickly. Since the early 2000s the air traffic is therefore growing and in fact one of the fastest developing on earth right now. An accurate and robust navigation is therefore key to track all the planes and make sure everyone gets to their destination safely. For comparison Germany has a growth rate of approximately 3% while India was over 23% in 2016. It is now actually on par with Germany when it comes to passengers carried and if the numbers continue to grow at such rates it will only take a few years to reach the size of entire Europe compressed into a single country. I can't find Indian companies which build big passenger jets so my guess is western companies like Boeing and Airbus probably have high hopes for that market similar to China. Anyways, the cryogenic upper stage has meanwhile pushed GSAT-9 to its transfer orbit from where the satellite will go on on its own, circularizing its orbit over the course of the next few weeks. Now in the end something about me. I'm currently working on an animation or basically a commercial for Tesla's project Love Day. They will pick an amateur's video, which would be crazy but there is a lot competition. For me it's just for fun and the last day you can submit your creation is May 8th. Another reason I mention this is I will upload and share it here so I hope you don't mind. It will of course also include more energetic vehicles and I personally find it worth watching even if you don't like Tesla. Ok, that shall conclude episode 83 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. <laughs>